I want you to imagine a pretty dark room. And there's a, a gentleman sitting in there, and it is pretty dimly lit. And he's trying to read a letter. He's trying to read a, a letter he just got from a dear Dear friend, now just to remind you, a letter is something that comes in an envelope and it has pieces of papers anyway. It's been a while maybe for some of us to receive that. But there's nothing that beats a letter that someone took time to write by hand. In this day and age, that communicates a lot. And so he being very much in awe that someone wrote him a letter. He's squinting and he's, he's straining and he's, he's even trying to hold the letter up a, a little bit to the small, meager amount of light that was coming from a window in the distance. But no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't, seemed to get the words to focus. They remained blurred. They were hard to decipher. And so frustrated, you know what he did? He threw it down on the coffee table. He gave up. His wife enters the room, seeing that he was struggling with this. She pulls back a heavy curtain and floods the room with sunlight, and he looks down and he goes, I can read it. I can read it. I don't have to get a new letter. He didn't need a new letter. He simply needed more light. And in this message that we are going to take a look at from Jesus and this powerful section of Matthew, or sorry, Mark 4. It's it's a message that's full of grace and, and hope and salvation. And he shows us that God's light is not only for us to receive, but also for us to shine so others can see his kingdom in truth and in grace So today, we're going to look at what it means to shine a light brightly, the light of Christ, to illuminate it intentionally, revealing the reality of the light of Christ, heeding and harvesting that which the light produces. So are you ready to journey with me on that? Amen? Amen. Mark 4, verse 21. And he was saying to them, a lamp is not brought to be put under a basket or under a bed, is it? Is it not brought to be put on the lampstand? And so in this section of scripture, in this one verse right here, we already have three things we need to define uh, for ourselves in the light of the culture The lamp represents, as we've probably guessed already, the the truth which the Lord imparted to his disciples. And these truths were to be brought out. They're not to be put under a basket or a a bed, uh, but they're supposed to be open, being able to be seen. Now, we also want to make sure to not just brush over the fact that he mentioned uh, a basket in a bed, okay? Culturally, that meant something. Culturally, that basket represented business. Business. Which, if allowed, would steal time and attention away from the things of the Lord. How many times have we allowed the business of life to steal the joy that we have in Christ. So that that basket represents business. That that bed, well, last night, 
it was pretty sweet to have that extra hour. That bed felt really nice. And that bed represents the same thing that it represents today. Comfort. Laziness. And you know what's interesting is that what Jesus is painting very clearly there, that business, busyness then from business, laziness from comfort are both enemies of evangelism of sharing Christ. I'm too busy. I'm I'm tired. And Jesus begins with this simple question and it gets to the heart of his teaching which is that a lamp is to illuminate, to drive away darkness, to help us see clearly Lamps were crucial for that day. In the evening hours, darkness enveloped the homes. That was the only way that anything would get done, would be seen. And so when Jesus speaks of this lamp, he is not just referring, though, to a physical source of light, but to the light of truth, the light of the kingdom. Jesus' question about a lamp highlights an essential truth for us as Christians. He calls us to be like lamps. We illuminate intentionally. This means that as believers, we have a responsibility to let our faith be visible to those around us. We're called to live in a way that reflects His love, His truth, His grace. That light should not be hidden. In Matthew 5, 16, Jesus is teaching, it's expanded here, let your light shine before men in such a way. Okay, so there's a proper way to shine the light. In such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Just as a lamp is placed on a stand to light up a room, so too we we must live with a purpose. We need to be seeking to bring light to those around us. And as we consider what it means here over the next few minutes to shine the light... We have to recognize the unique challenges that we face in shining a light in a post-Christian society. This era that we live in is characterized by, think about it, what does it characterize? Skepticism? And anyone talks to you, you're like, "Eh, yeah, let's see what you're really all about. Relativism? There's, in our society today, there's no such thing as one truth. It's multiple truths, and you pick your truth, right? That's what the world tries to tell us. And it really presents a daunting landscape for those who seek to illuminate the gospel in in a pure, true way that Jesus tells us to. Or does it? I I would argue in a world where objective truth is questioned and personal experiences are prioritized, you know, hey, it's all about how I feel. I would argue if we are actually sharing the true light of Christ, it is brighter than ever because it's different in so many ways than what's presented in the world around us. We just need to be true to God's word. You see, the nature of light is not merely an absence of darkness, is it? Light is a presence that transforms. In John 8, 12, Jesus declares, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This truth reveals that our ability to shine is rooted in our relationship with the Lord. 
We, and you need to get this, because this is what the world says. The world says we produce our own light. We do not produce our own light. Rather, we reflect the light of Christ that dwells within us. And in the context of a post-Christian world, this means that our lives must demonstrate an authenticity, a coherence that stands in contrast to the confusion around us. The world often promotes a fragmented existence where truth is subjective, morality is flexible, whatever you want to believe. And as followers of Christ, we are called to embody a different narrative. One that is anchored in the unchanging nature of God. Our lives characterized by integrity, consistency, become a testimony to the reality of His truth. I will give you an example right now of something that really bugs me really bad. And you can ask my wife after the service, and she will tell you, yes, this is something that bugs my husband. There are many people that jump online and have very popular podcasts, proclaim to be Christians, and actually share a lot of good Christian stuff, but then in between that, say every bad word on the face of the planet. I am sorry. That is not how Christ wants them to be. You are corrupting the light. Oh, we need to talk like that in order to relate. No, you don't. The light of Christ is pure. The light of Christ is full of integrity. The light of Christ is different. Did Jesus sin in order to get his word across? No, neither should we. And if we live a life according to Scripture that is pure, that is holy, that does share the truth, but shares it in a way that is above what the world does, you know what happens? People see the light. You see, living as light to the world is not about drawing attention to ourselves. It's about helping others see Christ in us. When we live in a way that illuminates the gospel, we become beacons of hope. Beacons of hope to a world that so desperately needs something other than trash. There's a reformer who once said, there is not one blade of grass. There is not one color in this world that is not intended to make us rejoice in the Lord. And God has woven this beauty and his truth into this world. And when we reflect the true light, the true light of Christ, we draw others to the beauty of Christ, the beauty of his salvation. The Apostle Paul echoes this calling to shine in Philippians 2.15 when he urges believers to be blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among you whom you appear as lights in the world. You see, our, our, our lives as followers of Christ need to be radiant, radiant with his love, with his truth, and the shining then is never passive. It requires intentionality, an act of decision to be the hands and feet of Jesus. 
bringing light into a world that often seems dark. Last night we were at dinner in Huntington Beach with a group of people that we had, had just had a, uh, a rally with and the, the leader of CEF International was there and our, our waiter was waiting on us. I mean, that's what he does, right? Sorry. So he's there and he's like, so why are you guys here tonight? And to me, the lights went off. Boop, 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 boop. I need to share. And so I was like, hey, this, this guy over here, he leads the, the largest children's ministry in the world sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And he looks at him and he's like, that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. So I was like, okay, well, sounds like he may be a believer, so... Uh. You know, uh, no, I'm glad he was a believer, but it was one of those things where you could just share it. It was just, you just share that. It's a, a chance to share the light. I, at the end of the dinner, he's like, so can you guys come after lunch tomorrow? Uh, come for lunch tomorrow after church? So he'd already connected the dots and we're like, we're not from here, dude, Sorry. But it's intentional. It's an act of decision to share the light. To be the hands and feet of Jesus. To bring light into a world that is dark. And you know what? Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Matter of fact, in our world today, I'd say probably the majority of time, it's uncomfortable. Ephesians 5.8, Paul, again, in this verse, reminds us, For you were formerly in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Well, in sharing this message, I would be remiss not to let everyone in this room know once again that light coming from within us in Christ is the result of transformation. It's the transformation that faith in Jesus brings. Without Christ, we are in darkness, separated from God, lost in our own ways, unable to find true peace. And, and everyone, I think the important thing to remember here is in our world that's very relative about everything, we also do a really good job of saying, I'm not as bad as the other person. So I may have a little bit of natural light coming out of me just because I'm kind of good compared to, you're a mess. Well, no, we all start where? in darkness, lost in our own ways, unable to find true peace. But through Jesus, we're given a new identity. We are called to be the light in the Lord. This isn't something that we can achieve on our own. We can't produce it on our own. It is a gift that only comes from knowing and following Jesus. He is the light of the world. And when we place our faith in him, his light fills us, shines through us. Jesus changes us from within, taking us from darkness to light, from hopelessness to purpose. And if you feel like you've been walking in darkness searching for meaning, searching for love, looking for love in all of the wrong places, I invite you to place your trust in Jesus. He promises to bring you into his marvelous light, to guide you, to give you a life that reflects his goodness. Let him be the light that transforms your light life and, and lead you to walk then, as he says here in Ephesians, as a child of light. If you are in darkness to today, say yes to Jesus. 
Step out of the darkness into the light. Walk with him and let his love change you forever. And to those of us who are believers, what does he say there? For you were formerly darkness. Formerly darkness. We were once part of the darkness ourselves. But now, as children of God, we are called to illuminate intentionally, showing the difference God's love makes in our life. The nature of light is Christ. Through His Spirit, God empowers us to be faithful witnesses of His grace and truth. And we've only cleared verse 1. Mark 4.22 For nothing is hidden ex- except to be revealed. Nor has anything been secret but that it would come to light. The, the light that Jesus speaks of here not only illuminates but also reveals reality. Jesus teaches that whatever is hidden will eventually be revealed. The truth of God's kingdom cannot and will not remain hidden. The reality of who God is, His holiness, His justice, His mercy, His love, are all revealed through the light of Christ. When we share this light, we are participating in God's work and revealing His kingdom to a world that often prefers the shadows. The shadows of ignorance and and sin. Psalm 119, 105, we read this. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word gives us the clarity and direction we need. But this light also reveals areas in our lives where we need to grow, where we need to repent where we need to align ourselves more closely with Him. Oh yes, no matter how long you've been a Christian, do you still need to work on your walk with Him? Yeah, we call, yeah, yeah. We need to be working out our salvation, right? We're saved, but we still have all the struggles. We still have all of the things that trip us up. God's truth reveals our sins and our shortcomings. But it doesn't just stop there. God's light reveals, though, His grace, His forgiveness, and the redemption we have in Jesus. 1 John 1, 5-7 through further heightens this power of God's light. And this is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light. And in Him there's no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And do not do the truth. Isn't that interesting? We do not do the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. As followers of Christ, we are called to walk in the light, to live lives that reveal the reality of God's kingdom. When we live in a way that reflects God's truth, we show others the reality then of what? Oh, I need Jesus. I need Christ. As one theologian said, God's revelation is a brilliant light. It blinds our our eyes because we cannot comprehend its full splendor. That's how bright it is. 
He, he reveals his kingdom through the person of Jesus, and we are called to help others see that truth. And when we correctly shine the light, we then need to heed his words and see his harvest. Verses 23 and 24. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he was saying to them, Take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you, and more will be given you besides. You're like, what? Well, Jesus' words in this passage highlight this importance of not just listening, but heeding his word. When Jesus says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear, he's calling us to go beyond listening. He's calling us to actively respond. He follows it up by saying, take care what you listen to. He's urging us to receive his truth with a commitment then to live it out. James 1, 22, but become doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgot what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and abides in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does, which connects then with this understanding of the standard of your measure it will be measured to you and more will be given to you. It is a profound blessing in heeding God's word. We see transformation in our lives. The more we take in, so this is what this means. By your standard of measure, it'll be measured to you. The more we take in and apply God's truth, the more of that truth he gives to us. Filling us with greater and greater wisdom. Greater and greater understanding. Greater and greater strength to live for him. If I hear some command from the word of God, but fail to obey it, guess what? I cannot share the light because there's no light there to share. I can't pass that to others. What gives the power and scope to us sharing the truth of Christ to teaching is when people see the truth in the proclaimer's life. Whatever we measure out in sharing the truth with others comes back to us, though, with compound interest. Paul says this in Galatians 6, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Just as a farmer reaps according to what he sows, we will harvest the fruits of faith based on our commitment to God's word and his purposes. When we listen and obey, God brings forth a harvest in our lives producing the fruit of the Spirit. You know what light looks like? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And whoever teaches you that maybe you'll only have one of those has not taught you correctly. That's what, you're supposed to have the whole package.
Jonathan Edwards once observed, God is the highest good of the reasonable creature and the enjoyment of him is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. When we enjoy him and our souls are satisfied, we then reflect light. When we heed God's word, we draw closer to him, finding the satisfaction that our souls crave. We grow in our ability to shine his light to others. So that means a few things here as we wrap up. First of all, how do we put this into our lives? How do we install this in here in Mark chapter 4 and what Jesus is teaching? We need to be bold in our faith. Don't hide the light under a bushel. No. I'm going to let the light shine. Shine in your words. Shine in your actions. Shine in your decisions. We need to reflect God's truth. Just as a lamp illuminates, let your life reflect God's truth. Spend time in his word. Know his word. Allow it to shape your perspective so you can help others see God's reality. You need to listen and act, not just listen. Be attentive to the Holy Spirit. Not only hearing God's word, but actively responding to it. Let it change you from within, and you will be willing to shine this light in a dark place. And then you need to trust God's increase. God honors faithful obedience. As we live out our faith, We can trust him to bring that increase. That increase in wisdom, his wisdom, in understanding, and an increase in influence with others because you're shining not your light, but his light. So Jesus' words here in Mark 4 is a call for action. It's a reminder that the light we carry is not for our own benefit, but for the world that desperately needs it. The message is clear. The kingdom of God shines brightly. It it reveals the true reality of a true hope. It brings hope. It calls people to a life in the truth of Christ. We are not called to sit in a dim room clutching the light to ourselves. We are called to be lamps on stands, illuminating the truth of the gospel for all to see. When when we heed and apply God's word, he promises to bring an, an abundant harvest in our lives and the lives of those around us. It is a powerful privilege for all of us as Christians. So we go from here with hearts and lives that are ready to shine, committed to hearing and obeying, knowing that as we pour out, God pours in more and even more. And as his light shines through us, may others see something. What do we want them to see the beauty of his kingdom. May our lives through his spirit be a clear reflection of his grace, his truth, and his love. Amen.